So, the spoilers are out for My Hero Academia. Let's just say that from what we're getting with the spoilers, this is going to be a very explosive chapter. Yeah, you're going to see why that's going to be the case when it comes to the spoilers, but first, right after this. <laughs> Hey guys, how's it going? It is your boy, Manga Mandrew, and I'm here to do my and cover the spoilers for My Hero Academia Manga Chapter 402. And from what we're getting with the spoilers, we are going to be getting probably what many people have been wanting for a while, a confrontation and seeing the conflict in the fight between Deku and Tomura, but with a slight twist with the inclusion of potentially All Might and All for One. Yeah, there's a lot that we really need to cover for the spoilers for this week, so let's dive right into the chapter. And to start off, the title of the chapter is Chapter 402, The Tearful Day. And there is some implications that you can make from this, but it's most likely going to tie into what we're potentially going to be getting at the end of the chapter. Which, if you remember what I said at the beginning of this video, uh, it's going to be a uh, very uh, dynamite. But the chapter begins with Shoto and Ochako on the ground as the cops confirm they both done their jobs of stopping Dobby and Toga. We see that the Twices have vanished from UA and that Momo was fighting them with a spear in her hand and machine guns on her shoulders. Hotsmith says that without them, UA is now lighter without the Twices and he'll be able to float again. Deku is managing to keep Shigaraki away from Yue and fight him in close quarters combat, but now All For One is getting closer to them. And this is probably the most interesting and unexpected part of the chapter. I honestly, and probably a lot of people, were not expecting to actually see looking at Mei as well as Momo uh, being making their appearances in this chapter. So that's very cool that that's going to be the case. But also, we're getting to see how much time has actually passed with the fight between all for one and all might and it's been enough time for the toga clones to actually disappear so that is some very interesting information that we really would have needed to know to understand the timeline of events so that's also something interesting that we could probably dive into more a little bit later and getting into the next part of the tech spoilers his plan in reference to all for one is planning to use his gloop warp bringing Tomura closer and giving him the synthetic copy of All For One's quirk to finally complete the body hijack. All Might tries to taunt him, but All For One says that he'll complete his plan first. He uses the gloop warp. He uses the gloop warp. He uses the gloop warp, but Shigaraki refuses to go. The goo starts to come out of Shigaraki's mouth, but he simply closes it. All for One understands that Tomura's consciousness is far too strong and changes to Plan B, which consists of grabbing All Might by the leg and flying him to Deku and Shigaraki. All for One says that All Might was the one who put this idiotic dream in those kids' head, so now he has to pay the price. Tomura teases Deku by saying that he has to save All Might and that in the meantime, he'll go and kill everyone who's at UA. Deku is panting like crazy. And this is where we get the unexpected but completely expected thing, where we get to see that All For One is not as focused on All Might anymore, but he is still going to be using All Might to his advantage because he seems to be unable to get Tomura to his location, so that means that he has to go towards Tomura to actually enact his plan. And this is kind of the middle ground between what people may have wanted and people may have hated, which is that All For One is kind of doing both. He is planning on potentially killing All Might while also trying to take over Tomura's body at the same time. So it's going to be more interesting to see where this is going to be going in the future with the more review proper. But going from there, we get into the next part of the text spoilers where Deku has been forcing himself to not cry because All Might said that he had to stop being a crybaby, but he's at his limit. The All Might Vested starts to fade, forewarning his farewell. The next page shows that Deku is shouting All Might with tears flowing like energy from his eyes. All Might starts reminiscing. Can I become a hero even without a quirk? asks Deku. Of course you can. 
After all, you always do your best and never give up on your dream. I've never been able to give up on mine either. My dream of being the symbol of peace. All Might then grabs All For One's neck with the arm that is still has a gauntlet on and smiles. All For One remembers Nana's moments, the same panel from Volume Zero, but doesn't quite know why. She was a pathetic woman who died in a ridiculous way. So why? Nana, in her last moment, said, All For One, All Might is going to defeat you because Toshinori is crazier than you. Cut to the present and All Might says, if you die one more time, you're rewired into a kindergartner, right? And his gauntlet explodes. End of chapter. Like I said, from what we get with the spoilers, the ending of this chapter is going to have an explosive finish. But I never said where that explosion was coming from. But yes, most likely what we're getting is the implication that this explosion is most likely going to be representing the ideals and the symbolism of dynamite, which makes sense on multiple levels for it being the final pseudo armor that was used to defeat all for one. But what is very interesting and cool and what is going to be in this chapter is that we're getting a little bit more context to the fight between All For One and Nanashimura that we never really saw in the manga proper, but we did see it outside sources very much adjacent to the manga, for example, Chapter Zero or Volume Zero. And how we're getting to really understand not just a little bit more about Nanashima's character, but also a little bit more about All Might's character and how it fits very well most likely with his characterization. As well as he's potentially going to be the one to actually defeat All For One in this moment. But yeah, based on what we're seeing with the spoilers, this is going to be a very interesting chapter. I can't wait to get more proper translations as well as getting more clearer images of this chapter and really give my thoughts on the chapter that I can't really do in a spoiler video like this. But yeah, that's all I really have to say for the spoilers for right now. Also, just to let you know that we are going to be on break next week, which is very unfortunate, but it makes sense due to the fact that we've had, relatively speaking, three to four weeks of consistent My Hero Academia content. So it makes sense that this is going to be the round the time that Horikoshi is going to be taking the break because within the potential next chapters, we may have finally the finishing blow delivered on All For One. But hey, let me ask you this. What'd you think of the spoilers? Did you like them? Did you dislike them? Leave your thoughts down below and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more content like this. Do all that cool jazz and hopefully I'll be able to catch you in my next video. Goodbye! <laughs>